Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be following up on our, our normal approximation conceptual video with an example of how we apply that. Alright, so remember the idea was if we have a binomial, right, we know the binomial mean is n times p, the binomial standard deviation square root np1 minus p. Alright, so if we can meet certain conditions, right, those conditions specifically being that n times p greater than some number, say 5, some books use 10. Right, then we can assume that we can use this approximation, that x can be approximately normal with a mean of n times p, that's our binomial mean, standard deviation here. All right, so how do we apply that? So here's an example you may have seen before, the probability that if you follow somebody for four years, the probability they graduate about 77%. So say you were an advisor, you had 12 freshmen that you were following for four years. All right, so let's think about, okay, with these 12 freshmen, 0.77, would it work here? Well, we don't quite meet our criteria here for just 12 freshmen. So let's see again why we don't meet that criteria. So the binomial graph, so here this would be right, binomial with n. So x we could say is binomial right, with n equal to 12, p equal to 0.77. Sorry, that's really messy. All right, so we could say this, it has this distribution. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like this, and we can see it's kind of left skewed, right? We wouldn't feel comfortable saying that this is normally distributed, right? Well, what if I bump my sample size up to 25? Okay, so I'm going from 12 to 25. Looks pretty good, maybe still a little bit left skewed. 35, a little better, slightly left skewed. What about 45? All right, so a binomial here with n equal to 45, p equal to 0.77, looks pretty normal. I feel pretty good about overlaying a normal curve there and saying that normal curve fits pretty well. All right, testing out those numbers, we're greater than 5, we're greater than 10, right? Some books use 10 as well. So we're in good shape. Okay, so our example, we are starting here with a binomial these parameters n equal to 45 p equal to 0.77 we meet our criteria for the approximation okay so calculating the mean right, calculating this binomial mean n times p we get this our binomial standard deviation we get this okay so our approximate distribution is normal with those parameters mean of this standard deviation this all right so what if we wanted to do something like this? So with n equal to 45, what's the probability 30 or less graduate? Okay, so with the exact binomial probability, now we want to think about, think about trying to do this by hand, right? X less than or equal to 30, okay, that would be, that would be 29 plus 30, plus 28, 27, 27, all the way down to zero, all right? That'd be like 31 different terms to calculate if you tried to do it by hand. Um, sometimes uh, something that can help us do things by hand is try to use the complement rule. Well, I could flip this around. I could say, okay, less than or equal to 30 is one minus greater than, greater than or equal to 31, okay, but is that really helpful? Because greater than or equal to 31 is 31, 32, 33, 34, 30, all the way through 45. Okay, so since this x value is kind of in the middle of 0 and n, there's no really easy way to do this except use this approximation, right? But if I do want to find the exact binomial probability, I can do that if I have a computer, if I have technology. Here, this is this is from Minitech. Or you know you could do it in, in Excel if you like if you prefer that. 
All right. So our normal approximation was this. Now doing it by hand with the normal approximation is easy, right? I just find a z-score, go to my table, right? less than that z-score. There we go. There's my probability. Okay, so let's compare the two. Right, now here's my binomial probability about seven and a half percent and here's my normal approximation probability about five percent okay so so seven and a half percent versus five percent uh, pretty close but it's not a perfect approximation it's pretty good but it's not perfect right now we can do something to make it a little bit better that's called our continuity correction all we do for our continuity correction is we add 0.5 to x for a less than problem. All right, so again, here's what we had. Pretty close, not perfect. Notice x was 30. All right, what if I add 0.5 to x, so 30.5? Let's see here. All right, now we're at 7.5% was our actual binomial and we're at about seven percent for our approximation so our approximation is much much better when we apply that continuity correction at 0.5 may seem kind of arbitrary and it is we're not going to get into the math behind it right? but point here is it makes our approximation a lot lot better alright so continuity correction is something useful something important to apply Another application of this idea of normal approximation, we can do this with the Poisson as well. All right, remember something interesting about the Poisson? Now the Poisson only has one parameter, that's lambda. Okay. Remember something interesting about the Poisson is its mean and its variance are both equal to lambda. Okay, so the standard deviation of a Poisson square root lambda. All right, so remember the idea of a z-score. It's x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So x minus the mean over the standard deviation to both my z-score. Right, now our criteria for the Poisson looks like this. Lambda greater than or equal to 5. Now here's an example of doing it. And again, where we would want to do it, some kind of situation where we kind of hit a wall difficulty wise definitely couldn't do this by hand and even if you're using a calculator or some computer programs might you know like x factorial trying to plug in 950 factorial that's a huge number okay a lot of calculators a lot of things aren't going to be able to deal with that okay so we can plug into our formula and do a similar idea with the Poisson all right, so know it works for the Poisson too, but really we're, it's more common and we're more focused on doing this with the binomial. All right, so hope that helps, and thanks for tuning in. I will see you guys next time.